The centerpiece of your camp kitchen is a table, and uh, this is called a Rolla table. It uh, folds up into a nice small package. We can load this right in the airplane for remote trips. If we're on a river trip, uh, it rolls up into a nice package. We can load it right in the back of our raft in our cargo area. So I want to take a few minutes and show you how to put this together. Uh, again, this is the centerpiece of your whole camp kitchen, so I really like to have a good table uh, with me out there in the field. So this one has a mesh bag on the end and this is where the legs and the support structures go to uh, support the table. You'll notice right away that you'll have two of these bars that are flat on the ends and they've got a hole drilled through them and you have four bars that look like this. They've got a cap on one end and a screw on the other end, a machine screw. These are the legs, these are the support beams. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our table over. We're going to line up the flat end of one of these support beams with the pre-drilled hole on the bottom of the table. And I'm going to take a leg and I'm going to put it through there and I'm going to screw it into the bottom of the table. Just like that. It gets nice and snug. Now we're going to secure the next leg, but of course you don't want to secure it over here because the table rolls this way. So we're going to secure it this way to support the table. Grab one of our other legs, go through the bottom of this, through that screw fitting, and try to avoid feeding too many mosquitoes in the process. Okay, we'll turn it over. And we'll do it again. And we've got one leg left. Snug it down really good. There you go. That's your roll of table. Uh, when I set mine up, I like to set it with this storage flap towards the area where I'm going to be cooking, and that way I can put utensils or what have you in that pocket while I'm working in my kitchen area. If you're with a group of just two people, one table like this is just fine. Uh, if you're with three or more people, I like to use two, and we'll set them up side by side. So I'll put another one right here or over here. And then I can run two stoves at the same time if I need to for large groups. I can put both of my stoves here and I'm good to go. Let's take a look at how to set the rest of your kitchen up. Okay, this is our camp kitchen all set up and ready to go. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is our uh, table. We've got our roll of table here. We've set it up with the uh, pocket that holds the legs uh, during storage right here in front so when we're cooking we can put our utensils in here our stove lighter anything that we need to have quick access to uh, the second thing I want to talk about is our stove um, here I'm using a propane uh, Coleman stove and I much prefer the propane stove over the uh, white gas stove and the reason for that is because they're just a lot easier to use um, I don't have problems with generators going out I don't have the bulk of a white gas stove um, and the propane once I turn it on and light it I'm good to go so it's real easy to use and it's been pretty trouble free for us uh, you can get a two burner or a three burner but if my, in my experience if you need the three burner you probably need a fourth burner so you might as well just get a two burner stove and then get a spare and that way you can run two stoves if you have a larger group so uh, the three burner stoves are obviously bulkier and so uh, I'm, we're just better off in most situations with a two burner stove. Now with the propane, um, you can see I've got a couple of bottles here. Um, I've got my stove hooked up to a, a little five pound bottle here. And that works pretty good for a couple of people. Um, you've got all your propane in one container instead of a whole bunch of these little disposable containers. Um, and you're good to go with just a couple of people. In my experience on a 10 day hunting trip, uh, that bottle will last us most of a 10-day trip, so I usually have to augment with maybe four of these. 
um, and that's if we're cooking a lot. You, you always have to plan on using the stove more than you think you're going to because if you get weathered in uh, and you can't hunt, typically what you're doing is sitting around camp cooking hot drinks and so on. Man, the bugs are alive out here today. Uh, the second option for larger groups is a 20 pound bottle. This is the kind that you would use for a gas grill and so on. And um, I have used these on remote fly out trips before. They work really well. Uh, if you're going to ship one of these out, make sure you get a plug for the screw fitting right here because a lot of cargo carriers will not accept the bottle if it does not have a plug in the valve opening. So get one of those brass plugs uh, before you ship it out. You'll see also on my propane setup, I'm running a propane tree with a Coleman lantern on the top. You don't need to run the lantern, but I do like to take a lantern with me out in the field. Um, Coleman makes a really nice uh, case for it. And by the way, this case can also be used as a moose scraper. It sounds like an antler rubbing on a tree, sort of, I guess. Uh, but you can use it to call moose if you want to. But the beauty of the Coleman lantern is I can take it off of this propane tree put a disposable bottle on it and I can take it right out to the kill site if I'm working really late on an animal. Or if I'm in camp fleshing out a hide or something like that, uh, typically you want to do that during non-hunting hours. So that usually means at nighttime sitting around camp and you need that extra light. Uh, finally, I've had hunts where I was hunting with another guide and so there were four of us. We had two clients and two hunters. <clears throat> and what we did is we would take the Coleman lantern and set it out on the gravel bar late in the evening if the other half of our group had not come back to camp yet. And having that little beacon of light out there in the middle of Alaska, from personal experience, I can tell you it's really comforting to know exactly where camp is and to see that little light shining in the distance. So we'll take that lantern and set it out on the gravel bar uh, late in the evening and it'll help guide our hunters back to camp. Uh, the propane tree also gives me the option of running multiple stoves. Um, you can see I've got some other valve fittings on here. I'm hooked up to one of them, but I've got another one here and I can run another line off of that to my second stove if I'm running with a larger group. And in that case, of course, I'll have two tables at the same time, uh, one next to each other, and then uh, I can run both of them off that same bottle. Of course, you can run your, your propane stove just off of the single disposable canisters. And if you opt to go that route, uh, my recommendation is that you create a system so you know which bottles have been used and which ones are still full. And the way we do that is simply by leaving the caps on the ones that are full. So if you're, you're using a bottle and you use it all up, take the cap off of it, dispose of the cap in your trash, and then uh, dispose of the bottle also in your trash, but make sure you leave the cap off so you know that that's an empty one. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, I've got my uh, couple propane fittings here. Um, so we've got the tree, or we can run with a Y fitting. And uh, this is just a brass fitting that goes right on my propane bottle. And it's got uh, a plug-in for each of my stove hoses right on there. Uh, this is another device that's similar. Um, it just has a gas fitting to go onto my bottle. And then it has a T fitting here, and I can run two hoses off of that if I want to do that. And that way I don't need the propane tree. Uh, of course, if I go with this route or with the Y fitting, uh, I don't have the option of running my stove uh, right there in my kitchen. And I do like having that stove close by or that uh, lantern close by if I'm cooking late at night because it'll attract a lot of bugs that fall into my food. Uh, no, but seriously, it's good to have a light source uh, close by. One other thing I will point out is on this Y fitting or this T fitting, uh, the Y fitting does not plug right into the uh, hose that you need for your stove so you need an adapter in the end of that uh, the thing to remember and then uh, this T fitting doesn't require that it's already set up for the hose so the key to remember on these fittings uh, if you're gonna go ahead and go crazy with your fittings for your stove just make sure you test fit everything before your trip plug it all up hook your stove up turn it on run it for a little while check for gas leaks make sure everything's working correctly. We've had trips where somebody forgot a propane fitting and we had to improvise. So um, you wanna make sure you check everything. And then finally, I've got my uh, water jug sitting back here behind my stove. You can put it anywhere you want, but I've got one with a little spigot on it and a cap here. I filter my water directly into this container and I just like to set it off the edge of my table somewhere where somebody can come by and get water uh, whenever they need it couple of other items I have here. Um, 
I've got my pots and pans bag and I usually just toss that underneath my table. Um, what I have in, this is a poor man's dry bag and there's another podcast episode that talks about how to make a poor man's dry bag. Basically this is a nylon grain sack with a uh, plastic trash bag liner inside it and I've got all of my bulky pots and pans in this bag and then I've taken the top of that trash bag, tied it shut with parachute cord and then tied the sh top of this uh, grain sack shut with parachute cord and then I put a piece of duct tape on here that says pots and pans. The only other thing I would recommend doing on these bags is if you're on a hunting trip especially is uh, you might want to get some black and green and uh, olive drab spray paint and sort of camouflage the bag a little bit. These are really white and they stand out so when you're moving them in and out of the boat uh, it's possible that an animal could see that. And then the last thing I have stored under my table is my kitchen box and we're going to talk about a kitchen box in another uh, podcast episode. There's a lot of different ways you can go with kitchen boxes but uh, in this case I store mine under the table and that way if it rains at night I don't have to worry about water going down inside my kitchen box. And this just contains all of my utensils, my spice kit, anything that I need to have quick access to while I'm working in my kitchen. That's pretty much it on the camp kitchen. Uh, the only other add-ons I would uh, suggest would be possibly a tarp to cover the area or a freestanding awning of some kind and uh, we could set that up over our kitchen area. Uh, what I like about the awnings is it gives me 360 degrees visibility while I'm cooking uh, and again if you're on a hunting trip uh, while you're cooking you're also hunting at the same time so uh, you want to make sure you've got good visibility around your camp. Well, that's pretty much it on the camp kitchen. There might be a few accessories that you'd want to add in, uh, but this is pretty much the basics that you'll need on your Alaska trip.